Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to the Breakthrough Church Phone Sunday service. My name is Andrew Young, also known as Jimmy Soul, and I am incredibly honored and grateful to be here with you this morning to share the Word of God that God dropped on my spirit this week. And um, I just want to thank everybody for coming. Before I get into this Word, I do want to open up in prayer. Just want to ask everyone to bow your heads, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and just let go of anything you may be holding on to, any heavy burden you might be carrying this morning that you weren't meant to carry. We have an opportunity to lay those things down at the altar of God. We can lay our burdens at his feet. We can cast our cares onto him knowing that he cares for us truly. I just invite everybody that's on this line today to be open be available to be expecting to receive a word from God, not to hear from me, but to hear God speak through me, to me, and to you. And we can pick up our burdens if we choose to when we leave, but just for the next 45 minutes or so to an hour, I just want to ask you to be an empty vessel and allow God to pour into you so that you can leave this place with peace. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for giving us life health and strength. We thank you for protecting us throughout the week, for being with us, for every trial we faced, every contrary wind, every test we endured. We thank you for all the blessings that you bestowed upon us. Every single one of those breaths that we got to take, we don't take not one of them for granted this morning. We thank you that the joy of the Lord is our strength that we can rejoice and be glad in this day that you made and this day that you allowed us to experience. We thank you for this breakthrough church phone. We thank you for Jackie being obedient and, and starting this thing and maintaining this thing and pushing the button. We thank you for everyone that came here to hear a word this morning. We just ask that you purify this word, that you cleanse it, that you let it speak to the hearts and minds of your sons and daughters on this line this morning, that you custom tailor it to fit their needs perfectly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So, the other day, um, I got a phone call from my little brother, and um, he called me about Jay-Z's verse on this song called God Did. And his reaction to the song was very similar to my initial reaction to the song. And he was just like, what is Jay-Z doing? Um, this dude just made a whole verse about himself. He talked about everything that he did instead of what God did. And I was telling him, when I first heard that song, I felt the exact same way. I was, like, triggered by it. And I wasn't sure why initially, but I was like, man, the song is called God Did. And I went and I did my verse to it. I did a, a remix to it, and I gave God the glory, the whole verse. I just talked about um, all the things that God did in my life. But when I really, really listened to the song, listened to the hook, and the hook said, um, they counted us out. Um, they didn't think that we would make it. They didn't believe in us. But I know God did. God did. Oh, yes, he did. And then, and then they, they rapped, right? And every one of the people on the song, Rick Ross, Lil Wayne, Jay-Z, they all proceeded to talk about not the things that God did because they believed in God. They talked about the things that they did because God believed in them. And that's when I really thought about that, I was like, you know what, we haven't heard that song before, and maybe that's exactly the song we need to hear. Like there's people in the Christian community, they're, they're, they're calling Jay-Z a blasphemer. They're like, man, Jay-Z is exalting himself even higher than God. He said, uh, Jesus turned water into wine for Hove it just took a stove. And he was talking about how he turned his lemons into lemonade, how he took the stove, which was what he used to cook crack cocaine, which he apologized for. His first line was like, Lord, forgive me for the stove, you know, um, but that was his way out or whatever. But he was talking about how he took his situation that he started with and he turned it into a billion dollars and to having legal entities on, on, the, on the stock market and even selling marijuana legally and 
all these different businesses that he has. And he was really inspiring a lot of, I think, drug dealers and people that are doing things the legal way, thinking that's the only way they can get money, to reexamine their lives and realize that they don't have to do it that way, that there's other ways to do it now, now that he's wiser. And I thought it was really effective. I was like, you know what, Jay-Z probably couldn't have affected the world, saying, man, look at God, look at God. Look. They would have just like, oh, hold went to church, and they might have just turned it off. But he used the thing that they're attracted to, which is his wealth and his money and success, and he dropped gems on them, and he was saying, like, God believed in me. That's why I'm blessed like this, and look at what I was able to do. So when I was listening to that song, like I told you, my initial reaction, though, was very similar to my brother's. I was like, man. I feel a way. But after I got off the phone with my brother, God started really speaking to me. And I felt God saying to me, really, I actually was saying this stuff to my brother. As a matter of fact, we were still on the phone. And I was telling him, man, I actually think Jay-Z might be on to something. Because when I first heard the song, I felt the same exact way that you're feeling. But if we really think about what Jesus would say in the Bible and what Paul would say in the Bible, even what God would say throughout the Bible, they wanted us to be one with God. And Jesus, of all people, was the perfect example. He spoke the word of God as himself. He, he identified with the spirit of truth and the voice of truth, the word of truth, as who he actually was. He was like, I'm one with God, so I speak as God. And he told us to do the same thing. So rather than tell you that that's what he told us, I want to show you throughout Scripture um, where Jesus tells us that we should believe we are one with God, that we should speak that way. And Jesus also was accused of blasphemy. People are like, how is this dude speaking like he is God Almighty? He's a dude. He's a human being. And Jay-Z was speaking that same exact language. It was weird. It was like he wasn't saying all the holy Stuff that Jesus talks about, but he was speaking as if he knew in his heart that he was one with God. And that was very triggering to me because I don't always do that myself. I don't really have that audacity. And I'm going to get into why I think a lot of people don't have the audacity to really step into that and walk in their oneness with God. But before I do that, I want to tell you, I want to show you what Jesus tells us to believe. I want to show you what Paul tells us to believe. And I want to show you what God tells us to believe. So I want to start off in John 14, verses 10 through 17. For these seven scriptures, I'm going to be reading the ESV. John 14, verses 10 through 17. Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? This is Jesus speaking. Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. This is the Son of God speaking. Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works. Wait a minute now. So Jay-Z saying, look at what I did. Isn't this even greater than turning water into wine? I don't know if Jesus would consider that blasphemy. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, and the Father may be glorified in the Son. Which Son? If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Not another helper to be with you until you die, 
another helper to be with you forever. Stop there for a second. Jesus already talking about this gift of eternal life. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him. Who's him? You know this spirit of truth, for he dwells with you. He's talking about himself being the spirit of truth because the spirit of truth is indwelling in him. He's identifying with himself as the spirit that's inside of him. He's a human being, and he's saying the spirit of truth, you know him, for he dwells with you. Talking about himself, Jesus, being with them in that moment, but he says, and will be in you. I'm with you now, but I will be in you. Jesus body will not be in you, but the spirit that Jesus identifies as who he actually is, the spirit of truth, the words of truth that come out of his mouth, that spirit that's speaking truth through him is who Jesus believes he is, who Jesus knows he is. And he's telling us that that same spirit in him that is speaking through him to his disciples will be in them as well. And because of that, he says earlier in the passage that they're going to be able to do the same kind of things he does and even greater works than these. Now I want to jump down to verse 21 through 23, same, same chapter, John 14. But this time I want to read the Passion Translation because I like the sauce they put in. I like the love in the Passion Translation sometimes. John 14, 21 through 23. Those who truly love me, he keeps reiterating this, if you truly love me, those who truly love me are those who obey my commands. What commands does Jesus, the spirit of truth, tell us, by the way? We're not talking about the commands of Moses, right? Jesus gave his own command. And he, and he said, and he, in the end, he said, listen, this is the whole law right here. Love the Lord God all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. Love your neighbors as yourself. The whole law can be summed up in this. These are the commands of Jesus, the word of truth, who had to come through and say, listen, let me set some things straight because these Pharisees and Sadducees, they're they taking my words and the words of truth. They, they're forgetting about the spirit of the tr- the spirit behind the words, the spirit of truth. For example, with the how they were being so uh, legalistic about the Sabbath. And he's like, yo, y'all don't even understand the spirit behind those words. I'm trying to tell you I made the Sabbath for you to get some rest so you can know that I'll work when you rest, not so you can starve to death, trying to be legalistic. I came to pay the penalty for sin for all those rules that were given to the world. The goal was just to guide you, but to try to tell you what was best for you. But you know what? Now I'm sending my spirit to guide you from within. Now you follow your heart and the convictions of your heart, which Paul really dives into a lot. But I digress. Those who truly love me are those who obey my command. Whoever passionately loves me will be passionately loved by my Father, and I will passionately love him in return and will reveal myself to him. Then one of the disciples named Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, Lord, why is it you will only reveal your identity to us and not to everyone? Jesus replied, loving me empowers you to obey my word, and my Father will love you so deeply that we, Jesus and my Father, will come to you and make you our dwelling place. So God the Father and God the Son will make their home in the person who loves God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I want to go all the way to John 17, two verses in John 17. John 17, verses 22 and 23. I think I'm back in the ESV. 
John 17, verses 22 and 23, Jesus speaking again says, the glory that you have given me, he's talking to God, I have given to them that they may be one even as we are one. I in them and you in me that they may become perfectly one so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them even as you loved me. Wow. Jesus is saying over and over and over again, the same God that is in him, the same oneness that he has with the Father, he wants us to have. He wants us to have him in us and the same God that he has in him in us. And he wants us to be in God and us to be so perfectly one that we can speak the same way he speaks as if we are one with God. Like there is no separation between the two. Now I want to tell you what Paul says. 2 Corinthians 13, verses 5 through 7. This is Paul speaking now in the New Testament. This is the apostle Paul. This is the guy who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. This is the, the dude who had all this revelation that the people who decided what would be in the canon of Scripture were like, yeah, 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 he's anointed. Yeah, 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 yeah. He understands what the Holy Spirit is saying. The Holy Spirit is speaking through this man. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 5 through 7, examine yourselves to see whether you are in faith. Test yourself. Or do you not realize this about yourself, that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless, indeed, you fail to meet the test. Jesus Christ, the model citizen of both heaven and earth at the same time, like us, right? We're human beings. We're spiritual beings still, but we're also human. So we're in earth. Jesus Christ, the model citizen, showed us what it looks like to be a citizen of heaven with an indwelling spirit of truth and a citizen of heaven that speaks truth to power. How to love God so much that you walk in obedience to your calling. To identify as the God in you. As Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ the man, right? He was one with the father, and he saw himself as a son of God, filled with the Holy Spirit. He's our example. He's the model citizen. We are supposed to see ourselves as sons of God in Christ, one with him as well, father, son, child of God, that's us, filled with the Holy Spirit. We're supposed to be homes for God, one with God. Jesus shows us what it looks like to walk around as a vessel for the Father and a vessel for his Holy Spirit of truth as a son. We are sons as well. We are adopted sons of God and daughters. The word son doesn't carry any uh, gender. Speaking about children, the whole world is waiting for the revealing of the children of God. Now, that doesn't mean we have the same assignment as Jesus because we do not, right? None of us were sent here to become spotless lambs who never miss the mark, who walk holy and perfect all day. That, that was not our assignment. We are not empowered to be that. It's not who we're supposed to be. We're not dying for anyone's missteps. We're here to be true to ourselves, to who God made us to be. None of us were sent here to be the the once and for all sacrifice for mankind except Jesus. He already did his assignment. It is finished. It is finished. Nobody is waiting for us to die for their sins, to live so perfectly that they get saved. That's not our job. We were sent to rediscover our first love, to find the way back home, to be fruitful, 
to multiply what is in us to ultimately become another helper. Like Jesus said, I'm going to send you another helper. The the word another carried this context in, in that verse that meant alike, just almost like a clone, like another but in the same token of the same vein, the same kind of help I've been giving you. There's going to be another helper that's just like me. It's going to be another manifestation of me. It's Holy Spirit. I'm sending this other helper that's going to live and operate through you. You're going to live in and operate through you so that you can become another helper like Jesus Christ, the man was. In Christ Jesus, we can help others and love them and help alleviate suffering and do things like Peter did when he saw the dude on the ground begging for bread that had been sitting there for however long he was sitting there, helpless. He's like, listen, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. By the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you to rise up and walk. And this dude gets up and starts walking, jumping up and down like, whoa. And he's like, what are y'all marveling at? This ain't me, Peter, that did this. This is the God in me, the Christ in me, the power of the name of Jesus that I carry with me, the authority that I have to speak truth to power that enables me to tell someone to rise up and walk. Now, before I give you my title for this message today, because I know I still didn't give it to you, I want to share what God said. I told you what Paul said. I told you what Jesus said. And most of us, we do believe Jesus is the living word of God. But if you need it to say that God said it, if you want to see something where God said this, I do want to bring your attention to Isaiah 41 and 10. And this is a very familiar passage of Scripture. You've probably heard this before, but I'm going to say it to you again. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. It's not enough to believe in the power of God. It's not enough to believe in the power of you. We have to learn to believe in who we are in Christ and how powerful we are because Christ is in us. We have to see ourselves as that I am that's talking when the truth is speaking through us, just like Jesus did. Right? God really gave me this sermon, to be honest with you, in a song. Right after my conversation with my brother, God started speaking to me in a song, and he said, um, the hook, the hook goes like this. The song starts off with the hook. It says, I believe in you like you believe in me. I know what you can do. I see who you can be. Once you have confidence, belief in who you are, I'll take you to the moon. I'll make you a star. Then the verse says, the only thing that held you back was really you. Relationships you think you lack, I have. I really do. And I'm going to open up doors for you. But it's still you that got to walk through them. Truth is, I tried to open doors up all along. Your energy was telling me you don't think you belong. Now that you've entered me, your inner me is strong. Rebuke the lie and tell the enemy he's wrong. Say, I am more than a conqueror. I am beautifully and wonderfully made. I am blessed in Christ Jesus. I am great. I believe in you like you believe in me. I know what you can do. I see who you can be. Once you have confidence belief in who you are, who you really are, not who the world told you who you are, not what your circumstances are trying to tell you you are, who you really are, a vessel where I dwell, where I strengthen you, where you're, you're one with Christ, the Son and the Father, empowered by the Holy Spirit, 
You are a son, just like Christ. When you really know who you are, I'll take you to the moon. I'll make you a star. I'll make you shine so bright. People can see your light for miles and miles and miles away. There's another verse, but I'll stop there. But in this song lyrics, I caught so many revelations, one of which is that the thing that holds people back, that was holding me back, that still in many ways does hold me back, is one of two things. The first being pride, right? That's when people lean too much into the power of me, the power of who themselves, who they are independent of God, right? There's so many people in this world that are caught up in the worldly culture that it's like, man, I'm giving 120%. They're, they're just, they think it's all them. They're not relying on God at all. They're just like, I got these plans, I got these goals, and I'm going hard. And they're working and they're working and they're working. And if they're not connected to the vine, they can't really produce anything. And whatever they do produce, it's kind of it's empty, right? It's hollow, it's fruitless, it's unfulfilling. It's not really doing what it's supposed to do. And that's really sad. But the other thing, which to me is even sadder because it's, it's really prevalent in the Christian co- community, the people that claim to follow Jesus is this feeling of being unworthy or not powerful enough. They believe too much in God alone. They're like, man, I'm just praying about it, and God's going to make it happen. And God is like, bam, (laughs) I'm giving you the power to make it happen. I'm trying to make it happen through you. I want you to take some steps. I want you to take some ordered steps. I want you to do what Jesus did to go see people, to go to places where people need help, and I want you to be the help. I don't want you to just pray for the help to show up. You are the help showing up. If you would realize who you are, I sent you to help the world with the gifts I gave you. You have an incredible voice. You have such a, a connection with me that I, my words flow through your mouth truly. You don't put so much sauce on them that it dilutes what I'm trying to say. You let it come out. Speak those words. Use that gift of melody I gave you and put those words in song and help the world that's listening to music that's doing damage to them. Give them an option to hear something else. Oh, I gave you a gift to, to, to draw, to make movies, to design clothes with powerful messages on it. Whatever gift I gave you to help the world. I need you to start using that. I need you to stop being so insecure that you're not worthy of this power that I'm trying to give you. Listen, I know what you can do. I see who you can be. I made you. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I set you apart. I had a plan for you. I, I, I had predestined you for something. And I still have plans, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope in the future. All these things that are happening together are working together for the good of those who love me and are called according to my purpose. I have a purpose for your life. I created you for a reason. I created you to be fruitful and multiply, Holy Spirit fruit. I want you to spread love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and self-control to the world. This is what I created you for. I created Jesus to be perfect, to never miss the mark, to be able to die for all your sins so none of you go to hell for missing the mark while you're walking around in this fallen world full of potholes. You are going to trip over some things. You're not in the garden. And even in the garden, there was something there to trip you up. There was a little snake treads under your feet to trip you up. But especially out here, there's all sorts of traps and obstacles and things designed to trip you up. I am aware of this. I am aware that you are sheep, which is one of the dumbest animals, independent of me. You don't have the wisdom to see things coming, to learn from the first time you trip, to sheep wander. They wander, they wander, they wander, they wander, they wander. The shepherd never be like, you know what? Get that sheep. I'm done with him. Shepherd going to get him every time. And the good shepherd? Man, good shepherd to fight off a crocodile, save that sheep. Jesus not playing. Jesus go to war on our behalf. He, 
God sent his only begotten son, the first son, the, 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 the real Adam, the one who had his spirit in him for real, that came directly from him like, man, this perfect son, to die for us, to save us, not so that we could never trip and, and, and fall, but so that we wouldn't have to go to hell and lose our eternity with God because we tripped and fell in this fallen world. We got to realize we're worthy. We got to realize, like Jay-Z does, listen, God believes in me. It ain't just about believing in God. That's my title for this message, by the way. I don't even know if I gave it to you. God told me to tell you, believe in me and you. Continuing with this and theme we've been doing for the last few weeks, I guess the title is probably me and you. God told me to tell you to believe in him and believe in yourself. It's not enough to just believe in him. That's, that's only going to get you so far, man. That's going to get you salvation. That's not going to allow you to be a helper in this world. That's not going to allow you to make the impact and the difference you were sent here to make. That's going to have you falling short of the promise that God has for you. You don't want to go to uh, heaven and just hear a laundry list of God thing, things God was trying to do through you that you didn't have the courage and the faith and belief in yourself to, to, to do, right, because you didn't feel worthy. That's what God was showing me, that, that line I said, truth is I tried to open doors up all along. Your energy was telling me you don't think you belong. Now that you've entered me, your inner me is strong. Rebuke the lie and tell the enemy he's wrong. Because the enemy was telling me, man, God can't use you. Why would he use you? I was watching this movie the other day, Father Stu. Dude is punching a, a statue of, of, of Mary. This is a true story. He's punching this statue because he's so mad at God for taking his little brother when he was a kid. His whole family became atheists because this little innocent five-year-old kid died. And, and that just was that. And he just spent his whole life mad at God. Then this dude who, if you watch the movie, you're like, man, that's probably was Jesus. <laughs> dude had all the scars, his whole body. Like, it's, it, was, it was crazy. He had the long hair, the, the olive skin, whatever. But this dude comes to him in the bar while he's drinking himself in the stupor, and he just starts speaking words of encouragement over him. And he's like, listen, stop being a victim. Realize who you are, man. And by the way, don't go driving today because he's drinking himself into a stupor, right? This jabroni doesn't listen and gets on a, a motorcycle and crashes and just he's supposed to die. Crazy car accident, and all of a sudden he sees this, this Mary, right? <laughs> it's ironic because he was punching the statue, but this, this, he sees what he, what he recognizes to be Mary, and she's like, oh, my son died for you. And then he saves his life, and then the dude's like, yo, I'm about to go be a priest. This is crazy. I had an encounter with God. Um, but then one of the things he was kept saying was like, why me? Why would you choose me? I'm over here cussing you out, being an atheist, punching a statue. Why would you possibly believe I'm worthy of this kind of power, of this kind of love? That's the main thing that holds most of us back. We don't feel like we're worthy because people didn't love us well enough to make us believe we were worthy. And it's unfortunate and it's sad, but the truth is it's because people didn't love them well enough for them to feel like they're worthy. And, they did, and the people that were supposed to love them well enough, somebody didn't love them well enough to make – and so on and so forth. But God, who knows the end from the beginning, who's seen every single thing that's ever happened to any of us, understands us. And none of it is enough to make him stop loving what he creates. He has so much compassion for us, so much patience with us, so much grace. And he's like, yo, I just need you to realize who you are. Now, the Bible says don't think too highly of yourself now. Don't sit here and think you are the Don Dada. Like, you're not Jesus Christ who died for everybody's sins, who walked perfectly. So you're not in a position to, to, to judge and look down on people and be self-righteous. First of all, the only person who did do that was Jesus, and he didn't do that to people. He was the only one who could judge people for, for, for not being righteous enough because he really set the standard, and he still catches a woman in adultery. He's like, I'm not judging you. 
He's not here to condemn the world. He came to save the world. So we're not supposed to think too highly of ourselves, but we're also not to see ourselves as grasshoppers against giants either when we're both men. Maybe they were a little bit taller. I don't know. Maybe they worked out a little more. Maybe they're a little bit more diesel, but they certainly weren't giants to grasshoppers. But that's how they saw themselves. And, and unfortunately, that's how a lot of us see ourselves in some situations in life. We see ourselves as these little powerless grasshoppers facing these giants. And God is like, you are walking in with the giant of all giants living on the inside of you. David didn't see himself as a grasshopper, powerless against an actual giant, Goliath. David knew he had the power of God Almighty with, with him, in him, and working through him, making him more than a conqueror. He wasn't scared of that giant sword. He never even got close enough to the giant sword to get hit by it. He said, ah, I'll take these, these five smooth stones, and I'm going to knock this big old thing out. I'm going to knock this dude out, and I'm going to cut his head off. Talking about my God. This dude done lost his mind. That's the audacity that David moved with and spoke with. We are blessed in the beloved. In Christ, we have God's blessing to be true to who we are. We have his support. How do we want to help others? What likes, dislikes, unique gifts did God give us so that we could help people, so that we can be the help that God wants us to be? The last thing I want to leave you with is a reminder of something I said earlier. When you embrace who you are in Christ, with Christ, with God in you, and you in God, and you understand your spirit is being held by God. God is with you every step of the way. His hand is on the small of your back guiding you. His good shepherd is guiding his voice from behind you, his rod and his staff, beating off the, the foxes that try to attack you, protecting you. He's got your back. He's got your front. He's got your side. He's got your inside. He's got your head when you wear that helmet of salvation. When you realize how powerful you are because of what you come in with, I have this line, and his other song was right, and I said, I am not worried about what I come up against. I think about who I'm coming, who I come in with. It's not about what I'm coming up against. It's about who I'm coming in there with. I'm coming into the situation. I'm coming into that battle with the spirit of God on the inside of me. I shouldn't be worried about you. You should be worried about me, not just the God in me. You should be worried about me because I know God's in me. I know how powerful he made me. He said, I will strengthen you. It's not about his strength just appearing out the sky. It's about you realizing how strong you are. When you're punching with the might of God behind you, when you're speaking with such authority you can cast out demons because you know God is speaking through you. God is with you. God is strengthening you. Do not be dismayed. Do not be discouraged. Fear not. They fear you when you know who you truly are. Relationships you, you think you lack, I have. I really do. Any relationship, any connection you need to make, you're scared. God dropped a business plan on your heart. He gave you a vision for something you can't imagine because you're like, I don't have the connections. I'm not signed to this. I don't know any millionaires. I don't know any investors. Blah, blah, blah. God's like, I do. I got all the relationships, yo. I've been trying to open up doors for you. But you got to walk through them. I try to open doors up all alone. Your energy was saying I don't belong in that room. Your energy was carrying around that imposter syndrome. God, why me? Why me? Why me? I'm like, okay, 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 so why me? He said, don't worry, I will qualify thee. He doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the called. He qualifies you by putting himself in you. You loving him empowers you to be obedient, and your obedience empowers you to be blessed. When you are in Christ, when the helper is in you, you become helpful. There are people that need our help, family. This world needs our help. There's young men and young women killing each other over buffoonery. 
They need help. They need the word of truth. They need the spirit of truth. They need to know their love. They need to know that it's okay to let someone else be right and to let someone disrespect them without retaliating. You don't have to shoot the guy at the football game because he made a bad call. But sometimes you need a little help. Sometimes you need somebody to go, it's okay, man, let it go. Sometimes you need that friend to give you the word from God. Sometimes you need to be reminded how amazing you are because God is in you and with you and because you are in him and with him, because we are one with God. God wants to manifest himself to the world through us. So let's believe not only in him, but in us, just like God did. That's my word for the day. Um, before I ask my brother John me to close us out and seal this word with a prayer, I do want to invite someone to um, to say the salvation prayer, to invite Jesus into their heart, to be their Lord and Savior. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. So all you have to do, family, if you're ready to do that right now, if you want to begin a relationship with Jesus, if you feel like you were led to this call and um, you've never done that before, you, you just feel like, you know what, I'm about to do it. I want, I want to have a relationship with God. I want him to dwell in me and be with me and empower me to be everything he created me to be. I now realize I don't have to be perfect and become Jesus, but I'm going to start looking a little bit like him. I'm ready to do that right now. All you have to do is repeat after me. Say, Dear Lord, thank you for sending Jesus Christ, your son, to die on the cross and rise again so that I may be saved. Thank you for loving me and seeing me as worthy to be saved. I invite you right now to come into my heart, to dwell in me, to make a home in me, to guide me from this day forth and help me do your will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 If you said that for the first time, congratulations. If you said that for the first time in a long time, congratulations. Either way, they're having a party for you in heaven. And I'm so grateful that you become part of this family. Um, and now I'm going to ask my brother, John Me to close us out in a prayer. And then we'll just tell you a little bit about what we do every day of the week or Monday through Friday and what our schedule is so you can be on this journey with us. Thank you for joining us. Brother Jami, I feel like I hear you on the line. I, I'm here. I am here. All right. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. All right. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Great morning to all. Thank you, Brother Andrew, for the word this morning. Um, thank also celebrate those who, who may have given their life to the Lord this morning, this is the greatest decision you will ever make is accepting Jesus as your Lord and, and Savior, the greatest miracle ever. So, Father, we thank you so much for sending Jesus to become the Lamb of God, to take away the sin of the world. We thank you that Jesus dealt with the sin problem. We thank you, Jesus, for loving us enough to come and take on a flesh and blood body and to go to the cross and take a, become sin for us, become spiritually separated from the Father, to become sickness and to become poverty, to become the curse. And you did this so that the blessing of Abraham may come upon us in you. And we receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. So we thank you that we're born again. We, we feel this with your Spirit, with Holy Spirit. We thank you so much, Father, for your redemptive plan, your successful plan in getting your people back, getting us back, bringing us back into glory, back into power. Um, as Brother Andrew was saying, back into sonship, back into that oneness with you. We thank you, Father, and give you praise that you recruited us also now in your plan to continue to enforce the victory that Jesus got over the devil and over this world system and over everything that is, a, that is the enemy of the cross. We thank you for giving us that victory. But also I'm asking that you would give us um, open the eyes of our understanding, give us revelation of who we are in Christ, of our royalty, of our sonship, of our position, 
you ask Adam, where are you? He wasn't asking for a geographical location, but you want to know why are you out of position as landlord, as king in this earth? And I thank you that you brought us back to that position again where we're now ruling and reigning with Christ uh, in, in earth now over every circumstance where you're training us now how to rule. We thank you and give you praise for that. We need to know who we are and to be able to see ourselves as the one with you, that we are in covenant with you. David knew he was in a covenant with you. Jesus knew he was in covenant with you. They knew they were in covenant with you, and they can walk in that, knowing that God is backing me and that I'm a giant killer. No matter what I face in life, God is backing me. God is in me. Holy Spirit is in me. Angels are around me are my servants. And so, Father, we need that revelation to see ourselves as you see us and start walking in that power, in that glory, to walk in that revelation, walk in that light. So when people see us, they see you. The same way Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Uh, in the Hebrew, it said when the angels saw Adam, it did a double take because he looked just like you. And we're creating the image and likeness as well. So, Father, we just thank you so much and give you praise again for be- that we're redeemed. We thank you so much for all those who are on the call this morning to hear the word, who accept into the word of God, and that we'll not be only hearers, but we'll be doers of the word, of the word that we just heard, spending time in it. You know, getting added revelations and mentions on things you've said and making those adjustments to your word, not adjusting the word to our lives, but we will adjust to what you say from this day forward. And thank you so much again, praying uh, for this Sunday coming up, Lord God, that another word, praying for whatever you have to be said, that you will fear your brother, fear Andrew with the word, to bring it forth uh, next Sunday. And thank you for a great week ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, my brother. Um, again, uh, Monday through Friday, call this same number, same time, 8 a.m. every morning. Come listen to some, some worship music, get your heart right. And then we take prayer requests. We have a prayer leader every day that um, leads the prayer. And we all come into agreement with each other on this journey. And um, we have a healing circle. We have a word of the day. We have a daily devotional. It's a beautiful, beautiful call. That we have we don't have to have church uh, one day a week we have church six days a week on this line so we invite you to join us um, for our morning wake-up call Monday through Friday and uh, also Monday nights we have a Bible study which is amazing led by mother of this line Angela Mays and then again on Sundays we have our Sunday service so thank you for spending time with us thank you for starting your day in the presence of God I pray that this word bless you I uh, thank you for John me I thank you for all the words he spoke over this line today. Thank him for sealing it. And I just pray you have a beautiful, blessed day. In Jesus' name, amen. And what we do on this line, we always say, I love you, I love you, I love you on three. So even though I can't hear you, on the count of three, I'm going to say it, and you can say it too. One, two, three, I love you, I love you, I love you. Peace, family.